Hi, I'm Phil Befford and welcome to the Rebel Network. This week's show, we're going to be talking about business cards, possibly the most cost-effective marketing tool and how you can enhance yours to make sure it's sending the right message for your business. tips are the business card. Everybody's got them. Well, they should have them. The thing is that you'll actually start to see a lot of business cards that really don't make sense. They send the wrong message about your business. So a couple of things we should be looking at, and this is just a couple of the tips, are the following. First of all, the quality of the material. When people feel your business card, they actually get an impression of what kind of caliber person you are just by the material. I remember somebody once giving me an old wallpaper printed business card with handwriting. What message am I getting? Secondly, do you have a photo on the back? Now, jury's out on this one. Some people say yes, some people say no. But if you like a lot of people, they're picking up business cards, putting them on their desk, three or four months later they've not done anything with them, and all you've got is a card with a name and you don't know who they were. A photo can help you to remember who you were and help to generate business back towards you. Number three is to have an email address. I regularly see cards that have contact me at gmail or in this part of the world emirates.net.ae. It doesn't show that your business is one that's going to be around for a long time. The impression is you're only going to be there for a short period of time. Make sure your domain name is on your business card. Even if you are okay at what you do, the challenge is people may not want to refer you if it means putting their reputation on the line if they think you won't be around. Number four is a call to action on the business card. So on mine, I'm sending them to my website, my blog, to connect with me on social media. These days, they're quite often talking about the QR code, which is the, uh, the barcode uh, that we used to see on shops. This is another way of helping people to maintain your details in a more efficient and easier manner. Hi, and on uh, Ask Dr. Phil this week, we've had a message from Ahmed, who's a lawyer in Oman. And Ahmed's talking about business etiquette and uh, timing. And he said that he's been dealing with a lot of Westerners in, in his region. And what he's noticed is that they're particular about the time that people turn up for meetings and really he wants to know what's considered reasonable in our part of the world. Well for many people the idea is to be early for a meeting. F five minutes before a meeting is a good time to get there because that's a nice time, it's relaxing and you've done respect to the client uh, by being on time. Too early you can actually make them uncomfortable because you're sat in the office waiting. There's another other couple of elements to this as well. If you're actually late for a meeting, it doesn't help the meeting itself. The challenge being that you're probably stressed because you know you're late. If you know you're late and you're stressed, you're turning up uncomfortable, unprepared mentally, and it doesn't do you any favours. What I would highly recommend is not turning up late for meetings, because that can, in a lot of parts of the world, be disrespectful. If you're going to be late, and it does happen, what with the traffic, call ahead and just say, look, I'm running a few minutes late and I'll be there at this time. Everybody's happy, everybody's respected and we can move forward. <laughs>